So in this video, I want to talk about justifying uh, why you did not choose a questionnaire for your study as a method of data collection for your study or any other method, but I want to focus mainly on the questionnaire. Uh, it is uh, quite a common question uh, during VIVA or, or thesis defense. And, uh, and when we practice with uh, some of my students, when we practice uh, some sample example VIVA questions, uh, we often focus on this question. By the way, if you want to practice uh, for your VIVA, uh, feel free to reach out, uh, look at the services I provide. I provide all kinds of tutorials uh, at any stage of your, of your academic journey, at, at any level of, uh, of academic program, including uh, practicing exam or VIVA responses. And it is indeed quite common for examiners uh, or supervisors, examiners to ask, why did you not choose this method? Or why did you not consider, or did you consider that method. So basically, in addition, uh, or even instead of asking why did you choose a, uh, an interview, for example, for your study, they like to ask this, uh, this other question. And it's important to be able, of course, to answer uh, this question, uh, mainly to show them that you're aware of these other methods, that you just didn't just focus on one method or just because it was convenient or maybe because it's the only method you know about, but rather to tell them uh, to show awareness of other methods, to show that you have considered other methods and demonstrate why you, at the end, you decided not to include them. And in terms of your response to this question, why did you not choose another method or specifically why did you not uh, add a questionnaire to your qualitative study? So I'm assuming you're, you're doing a qualitative study, uh, possibly based on interviews. Uh, of course, I cannot provide you a, a template for that will uh, fit any study. This will be highly dependent on your context, highly, highly dependent on your study, on your rationale, or all kinds of factors. But, uh, but a general rule uh, that I like to discuss is that you generally want to uh, explain and justify why the other methods would not necessarily result in you uh, obtaining and gathering the kind of data that you needed to obtain for your study. Uh, so whilst this is relatively straightforward for some methods, so for example, uh, if you conducted a study where it was obvious you need to get some kind of uh, views and responses from people, from, uh, for partic from participants of a study, it's relatively easy to, to, for example, justify why you did not collect some additional documents. Maybe it just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't, it's not relevant for this study at all. Or why did you not observe uh, the participants just talk to them. So, so usually it's relatively easy to, to see why, because you have a, an idea in your mind. Uh, with questionnaires, however, I would say it's much uh, trickier than this. And why is it trickier? Well, generally there seems to be uh, a love for, for mixed method research these days. So for the last decade, uh, in the last decade or so, there's been a huge increase in mixed methods. Uh, studies and also this has been reflected in, in supervisors and all kinds of academics also being quite uh, focused on mixed methods research. And what happens a lot is that uh, indeed supervisors, examiners, they really insist on a, uh, including that additional method. And the reason is a little bit more, uh, like I said, it's a little trickier uh, to defend that, uh, that choice, uh, that decision not to include a questionnaire, for example, in your study as an additional method resulting in your study be, uh, becoming a mixed method study is because uh, arguably questionnaires uh, can fit almost into any study. And arguably, there are, uh, it's hard to see any, any, uh, any limitations or reasons not to do that because, of course, questionnaire, a questionnaire will, the inclusion of a questionnaire will expand the findings, it, it will expand the sample, it will help us uh, towards uh, transferability of our findings to, to explore other contexts, whether more people feel this way. So, so why not choose a questionnaire? Why did you not choose a questionnaire in your study? So a good argument to start with, again, remember that I cannot guarantee that this argument uh, fits your study, but usually uh, it turns out that it does. So just consider this argument. Uh, in most studies, uh, if, if they are qualitative, if they are qualitative studies, uh, chances are you're exploring some kind of an under-researched or under-explored phenomenon. 
I, I, like I said, chances are it doesn't mean that this has to be this way. Maybe your study is quite deductive, maybe you're using a previously uh, developed findings and, and models. I'm not talking about these studies. So like I said, chances are you're exploring something that's relatively under explored under research. You are looking for that gap in research. You are looking for that gap in understanding in our understanding of a certain phenomenon or 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 experience uh, or anything like that or concept. So so your study uh, by nature is quite inductive and is going to be quite exploratory. We're trying to gather understanding of that, develop some kind of understanding or even a theory. So if this is your study, if this is what you're trying to do, uh, here is the argument for why you did not include a questionnaire. So questionnaires, uh, by their nature, they do require uh, some understanding of what we're trying to explore, basically. So, uh, so we do need to have some some view of what to include in the questionnaire, what kind of items to include in the questionnaire, what what is that questionnaire supposed to measure? So, if, for example. Imagine we're, uh, as always, my examples will be about identity. This is the topic I'm interested in. But imagine that we're uh, trying to explore some uh, some new topic of migrant identity or student identity. Let's say migrant identity, migrants from a specific country who came to a specific country, let's say it's a narrow uh, field, nar narrow niche. We're trying to understand uh, their migrant ident identity, let's call it this way, or language identity. There are so many types of identity. So. Uh, if we're trying to understand what that identity is, so we're trying to understand what factors contribute to it, you know, what is it, how do we define it, how is it constructed, uh, how, uh, what factors may affect this identity, everything we want to, we need to know about that identity. We don't know these things. So what do we put on the questionnaire that, uh, to, to explore this topic? There isn't anything that we can put on it. If we if we start with a qualitative study, if we develop this understanding, so here is your study. Eventually, we understand what uh, what factors uh, make up that identity. We understand how it's affected, how it's built, how it's constructed. Uh, that's when you know in the future we can have a questionnaire that uh, that, for example, assesses or measures or whatever explores that identity further because we can for example if we know that uh, part of that identity let's say is uh, what uh, we believe other people believe or think about us imagine that this is part of the identity we found that or some other studies found that uh, part of that identity are uh, perceptions about other people's um, thoughts and beliefs about ourselves in that case i know what to put on the questionnaire because i can put questions such as uh, it is important to me what other people think of me or you know i often i often think about other people's perceptions of me you know agree strongly agree disagree and so on and so forth so uh, so i have some elements some items to put on that questionnaire because i already know what uh this identity uh what elements there are in that that construct that i'm exploring but if I don't know, because my study is meant to explore that concept, because I suspect there is a thing called migrant identity or something I call migrant identity, but I don't know exactly what it is. What would I put on that questionnaire? So that's so that's the main thing. Uh, similarly, if we're exploring, let's say, dyslectic students' experiences or dyslectic, uh, so let's let's make it even more, uh, even broader and open-ended. So a, a phenomenological study of dyslectic students' experiences at school, or maybe specifically their coping strategies or something. So again, uh, what do I put on a questionnaire to explore their experiences? Uh, once I know about their experiences, so again, for example, I know that uh, uh, there are things that affect their self-confidence. For example, their, their teachers' perceptions, their, their peers' perceptions. Maybe they don't like when the teachers explain too much or when they single them out from the class. Maybe there are things that we know that bother them. That's when, again, if we ever construct a questionnaire, I will be asking these questions. It bothers me when my classmates do this or that. Uh, you know, I like when my teacher supports me. But again, if it's a, a relatively under-researched uh, study uh, phenomenon, wh what would I put on that questionnaire before, you know, before I know these things, these elements of their experience? So yes, of course, you can have open-ended questions, but what's the point of having a questionnaire with only open-ended questions? Uh, it will never give you the same kind of insight, the same kind of uh, in-depth insight into 
the findings because you uh, and here is another reason it's kind of leads me to another reason uh, in a questionnaire you cannot really ask you know follow-up questions you can design a follow-up question but you cannot respond and react to what they are saying so again it all has to do with this uh, nature of qualitative research that you know gives us insights into these under research phenomena and also gives us the possibility to react to respond to explore further to ask follow-up questions so so it's uh, so it's all uh, it all has to do with this um, uh, inductive and exploratory nature of a study And both of these things would be used as a, as a part of that response to, for example, why did you not choose a questionnaire? I did not choose a questionnaire because it is an under-researched phenomenon. Uh, I did not, we do not have a full understanding of it. Therefore, I felt that I do need to first explore it by talking to people to, uh, to determine, even for future studies, determine what kind of items to put, for example, on a questionnaire, because at the moment we do not understand how to measure, how to assess this phenomenon, for example, how to assess this identity. In addition to this, uh, I, I believe it was important for me to be in that research uh, context, to be there and to talk to the participants, because this would give me an opportunity to ask follow-up qu follow questions, ask for clarification, clarify things to my participants because it's a it's a difficult and it's a vague topic so i felt that it's important for me to be there as well so so these are uh, example things that you can say to your examiner when you're being asked this question and finally of course uh, there can be an argument okay then you can uh, you could have a, an exploratory uh, sequential design in your study which basically means i do have a i do have a, a video about it uh, I think it's going to show right here about mixed methods exploratory sequential uh, design where you start by uh, doing a qualitative study so for example you can start by uh, by interviewing participants specifically for the purpose of having these findings and then developing a questionnaire based on these findings so that could be of course an argument you could still do this kind of design uh, but then of course there is a whole range of other factors involved uh, including the completely different time frames needed to conduct this kind of a study so so this you know this is at least part of that response in addition to that you never know maybe uh, you still don't feel that it's you know this understanding is developed enough or good enough to straight away follow it up with, uh, with a questionnaire because maybe ideally what you suggest in your uh, thesis in your dissertation is that we should continue to explore this topic further to get better understanding and then possibly in the future we can start you know uh, attempting to make any kind of any form of generalization so maybe that's simply not uh, the goal so that's kind of another reason generalizing uh, to a broader population broader sample was simply not my goal i wanted to focus specifically on this small sample on this uh, specific case in my study so that's it i hope that you enjoyed this video uh, do let me know in the comments if you did. Do let me know if there are any other questions maybe that you want me to address. So, so example, Viva or, or defense questions. And I'll, uh, and I'll consider recording a video just talking about um, ways to address these questions. And also remember what I said before, I do offer uh, private tutorials, all kinds of support at all kinds of all stages of your research, from research planning to implementation, developing your data collection methods or analyzing your data, supporting you in, in data analysis. So all kinds of services. And if you're watching this because you're preparing for your Viva, good luck in your Viva.